Previously on the other dungeon. On the demon ship, Lane and the remaining crew disposed of the dead bodies, then began to groom Arog to be the new captain. But Eriku's spirit kept interfering, so they hunted it down and attempted to find a way to deal with the mischievous escaped barbarian ghost. And back in the dock, Sin and Ivory had their day in court, and Sin argued she wasn't wholly at fault for the cellar arson, was able to delay the outcome of her case, but eventually had to return to court and was found guilty. And now, the other dungeon continues. You guys are left to your own devices now here in the market. I can send 45 gold pieces. What's this for? For the payments. I did kind of send that off. So Ivory does try to make right and offers some financial recompense. I'm gonna take all your money. You guys I stick together and split up? Yeah. You can go have a couple drinks. You can go check out the market and see what they have to sell if you like to. I don't know how you, well, I guess you have a lot of money to blow. If you're in I'm debt and all. Crazy. You do have to eat food every now and then. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go you will hang out in the stable, spend some quality time with your animal? Yeah, it's been a while. Alright, Ivory, do you take this as a hint and split up, or do you try to follow Sin, make amends? I'm gonna stay, like, football field behind Sin. Alright. So I, I can see him in my elf eyes. Roll me a stealth check to see if Sin notices you following. He rocks, like, T-Rex arm flexing and all that shit. I can shit. smell him pretty well. You can roll a perception check to see if you smell him. I got 14 on that. 19. Hey, you would definitely still smell your friend Ivory. You're not sure if he's fun or not, but you've been, you know, you've walked for a while now towards the stable. And you still that scent of Ivory still in the air. Maybe it's just in your head. I'm trying to like, try to like rub your clothes on Bessie too to try to get the smell of uh, Ivory off of him, just in case that's what it is. Kind of like blue in that tree. Ivory watches from across the street. I watch even more intently. I want to like turn towards like the closest to you, like 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 a fish. Okay, do you want to take Bessie out with you or are you leaving Bessie here? Come on with me. Alright, take Bessie out of the stable and you guys ride down to the docks area, the fishing area, and the south dock sort of orc territory. Near where Ivory's abode is, really. And near where the slime boy's territory is on the other side, so I think which area of the fishing docks you want to go to. Do you want to go towards the more orcish side of town or the more slime boys ish side of town where the docks are? I've had a lot of experience lately in the work part of town. Probably the orcs. I mean, there's very little of the South Dunks that is near the water, so the, the orc territory is better. There's two uh, longer fishing docks that go out to the water on either side of this orc territory. One is in one gang territory, one is in the other gang's territory. Directly separating them in the two, between the two is some fish statues that are made off limits by local guards. They've got nothing really except put up signs warning people not to go near them. The guards don't come to this area very much. There's just signs around these statues. You can go to either one of those docks or fish near the statues if you want to risk getting caught by the cops, which rarely come here. So there's one gang controls one dock, one gang controls the other dock, and there's sort of like no one at the statue because they don't get hassled by the guard if they do come by. When you're from this area, sort of, so you know there used to be a lot of fights in this area, like the, the fish statue used to be very contentious, so it's like right in the center of these two gang areas. There used to be a lot of fights around here, so maybe they're trying to clean that up. You can do a knowledge local if you want to know more about what happened with the statues or why they've been closed off. That's yeah, I want to do that. <laughs> there was lots of different stories going around about why they closed the fountain. So you do know that it was an area where these two gangs used to fight a lot. So that's a lot. Of, one of the rumors. There were some other rumors going around about a kidnapping or people going missing. There's a lot of just stories kind of floating around. You're not sure which one's true, but there's a lot of reasons. It's off limits now. Or I head up to. I think I'm gonna head up to the one of the docks before I do. I think I want to do like animal focus on myself. Owl plus four. Oh, now the two docks you know about, you know, there's one closer to where Ivory's hut is, like kind of right, right by Ivory's hut is where one dock is, and the other dock's sort of on the other side of the different gang territory. You want to fish near Ivory's hut or far away from Ivory's hut? Yeah, I want to stealth my way up to the one closer to Ivory's hut. All right, Ivory, you're still following about a football field's length behind. Are you riding your camel or walking alongside it there? And... Um, I'm pulling her. So I was just seeing if your speed was any different. So yeah, you're able to keep up with Sin pretty well. As Sin is walking towards the dock in your neck of the woods, passing through the other side of town, the other gang territory, and like crossing just north of where the fist statue is, Sin doesn't look behind, but there is a, a group of orcs sort of building and following this rat person with the camel walking in the direction. So you see a gang of folks sort of like collecting and following as you come in from behind. Sin is being followed. The orcs don't see me yet. I'm behind them. So you're behind them, so yeah, they're like, you got a sandwich. Works in the middle. Who with a perception check, you might be able to pick out how many you were. Oh, that's real bad. 
Oh, yeah, it's dark and they're all like huddled together, so you can't tell. And they're big, so it's li no matter how many of them, it looks like two, it's more than the two of you, it's a lot. You would be worried if you had that many orcs following you home late at night, and you live around here. I wanna see if I can still check past them. I got a ten. Oh, you're gonna try and rush past them, though, but they're gonna see you running up. So they're gonna veer off and go for you, so roll for initiative ivory. And you can uh, roll perception sin to see if you hear this going on. If you hear this going on, sin, you can also roll for initiative, so roll perception first. Oh, yeah, that's enough. You can, roll, you can roll initiative as well. You hear something behind you now. You turn around and look. Fourteen. Yeah, you look around behind you. It looks like a bunch of guys are about to jump your friend Ivory, who for some reason looks like he was following you. So it looks like to you a bunch of guys are about to jump him. You don't know they were following you. Twelve. So you guys, I think, both beat that for initiative. You can tell right now Ivory's, like, right beside him. They're, like, coming at him from the side. He's, like, five or ten feet away from him. And you're about 15, 20 feet in front of them. I'm going to do, um, animal focus about casting it on Bessie, who's on my... Companion as well. I think I'm gonna cast bull on her. No, I'm gonna do strength. Bessie gets beefed up. Ask Bessie to sit on uh, the closest orc. And the line animal. <laughs> yeah, she seems hesitant to spit. She's stubborn. She wants to hurriedly walk away from them. She's not interested in spitting. She's still trying to pull you the other direction. I'm gonna take out my scimitar and I'm gonna swipe at the closest one. Thirteen. Fortunately, a miss on that guy. I'm gonna see what, how armed these orcs are. Perception check. It's a natural one. There's a bunch of them. And you, with your experience with the orcs, it doesn't matter if they're carrying clubs, brass knuckles, daggers, or just their bare fists, they're dangerous to get in a rumble with. I'm gonna summon a viper out reaching my hand towards the closest orc. You wanna roll maybe an intimidation check with that? Yeah. See if maybe these orcs are scared of vipers. It yes. can't, it, cause it can't attack till next turn cause it has summoning sickness. Street magic! <laughs> Average. Just as intimidating as you think a snake coming out of your sleeve would be. Alright, then now it's some orcs turns. 10 versus ivory. 10 versus ivory. 12 versus ivory. 22 versus ivory. 16 versus ivory. And a 9 versus ivory. You handle 15 damage and still be alive? Yeah. So you're, you now see your friend's been knocked out by six of these orcs and are like beating him and then like six of them are coming to beat at you. That's gonna be a 20 not natural. 22. A 6. 16. 10, 23. Do one reflex save for one to take half on one of them. 20, not natural. Alright, so the one you'll take half on. Instead of 8, you'll take 4. On top of that, you'll take 9 more. You guys are both unconscious. And then you can wake up the next day. All your gold's gonna be missing. Also, Bessie is gone. And you guys are there in the street. You'll probably wake up and look over at each other at the same time, groaning. Yeah, I'll pick that up and take it back to the shack. You wake up in the trash hut next to the shore. So you hear the waves lapping up against the shore here in the South Donks area and heavy orc territory. Territory, but you're back at least on the side of the orc territory that Ivory is more familiar with. You guys have had time to recover at least 12 hours. If you want to roll a d12 plus con to recover, you can. But you guys wake up in Ivory Shack, Sans Gold, Sans Camel. Otherwise intact, and they didn't take any of the other belongings, shovel your weapons and everything else you had in your pack, luckily. They didn't totally loot you. They just were after your money. So that's a silver lining right there. But you guys are once again destitute, broke. I gotta get my useless camel back. Yeah. <laughs> You guys might knowledge local if you want to figure out how to get the camel back. 21. Either you're going to find some orc that kept it because it's a nice ride and it's a status symbol and you're going to have to get it back from that particular orc or they fenced it and you're going to find it at the stable for sale and you have to rebuy your own camel back. Oh, bastards. You know it's probably easiest to go check the stable first and if it's not for sale there then you know you have to go hunt some orc down to find it. I don't know what you're going to do but I'm going to find my best date. I started crawling out of the, crawling out of the shack. Grab by the legs and I'm like, pull yourself together. <laughs> All right, so the, the South Donk stable area. So that's the cheaper stable. Diplomacy to talk to the stable owner to, to get any information. Twenty non-natural. Ivor gets in a conversation with stable owner. You've seen this guy before. You're from this area. You've passed through here. He recognized you guys because Sin has boarded uh, Sin's camel here before. This is where you were keeping it for. It's probably the cheapest stable in town. No sign of your camel here now. Stable owner will point out that you leaving the camel here is pretty rare because camels are not that common around here. The fact that you were walking around the camel and you were willing to leave your camel in this like low grade stable set off all kinds of red flags. So, but he would assume if someone else bought it now, either one of the orcs kept it because the status symbol or it's for sale in the higher and the high east. He had to guess. It's not at his stable though. You guys want to head out of this orc part of town, follow the road to the high east to check the stables there. I rolled low enough that besides a little light rain, you guys don't have any encounters along the road. There are some guards, but they don't bother you guys. You guys look innocent. You're not double-figure up to any no good. You're just like walking down the road in broad daylight. No trouble. 
going about your business. You guys will uh, make it to the fork in the road, sort of where like the uh, crossroads comes together, and you'll head north along the road towards the high east. So you reach the gate of the high east, which you are now at. It's, it's a guarded gate, it's a closed gate. That's what your business is here. We've come to find work. We're servants coming to work for. So be quiet. <laughs> I'm the son of Olar Zul. Open the gate. All right, intimidation check. Natural, natural one. They know your father, but that means they also know about you. And they check they check their board, and there's like a picture of you, like uh, hanging up on the wall. It's like, do not let this guy in. And they come, they point to the picture and shrug. I try to be traveling. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> they look at the bottom, and the name matches the name you just gave, and they shrug again. <laughs> Roll disguise check to hold the finger over your nose. Natural 20. Natural 20. That's not me, Sam. I don't know how you just Jedi mind tricks these guys, but they're not going to let you in the door yet, but they'll let you recast your story. You're not Ivory Zool. Who are you then? You look a lot like that guy, but we can tell now you have a finger mustache, which is different. So who are you really, and what's your real business here? Sam Chad's motorboat. I have business here at the bank. I am but a trader of sorts. All right, diplomacy. Natural 20. All right. With that, they'll say, well, sir, surely someone here to do business at the bank has a little extra coin to throw around. Oh. Obviously asking for a bribe. You have no gold right now, of course, because you got robbed. How dare you dishonor your post? My father will hear this. Oh, wait. <laughs> 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 father. Intimidation check. Does get sick Mr. Motorboat on them? 17. So while they're not sure of who Mr. Motorboat is, they don't want to piss off any of the residents of the High East. If you can offer any proof at all of your business here in town, they'll allow you through the gate, but they need some sort of proof that you're here to see someone. If you can give them a name, they can call someone to the gate to meet you, to let you in. You have to have a resident to vouch for you or something. We're gonna be late for our appointment with the bank. They're gonna be so mad. I'd accept the knowledge local to see what you know about this area, if you even know any tips and tricks on how to get in. Because you are from this area. This is like your home turf. I'm gonna roll that. I'll see if I remember any of my father's friends or something. You were not a socialite. You kind of kept yourself in your room and made potions and stuff. You never really paid much attention to the socializing aspect of your rich father's life. So you don't know any names to throw around. You don't have any friends in town. Nothing. I was hoping you had a best friend from childhood, but you just don't. I think Sin's your first friend. <laughs> Bluff check for sin to bluff about having an appointment in town. I rolled a much higher sense motive, so they're gonna turn you away. Last that you please exit the heights. Please step away from the high east. Please step away from the gate before they're forced to call the guards on you. Guards are there? There's only two guards at the gate, but they can easily call more for sure. Well. When you guys wanna roll a knowledge dungeoneering, maybe? That might help you in this particular instance. 14. You will know that you can either scale the wall, go under the wall, and you being from this town, you've heard a rumor there's an underground gang that travels through secret underground tunnels, magic tunnels. Maybe that would get you in there. So there's a possible over, under, or secret magic tunnels. Those are your three ways to get in without using the actual gate. While you wouldn't try to climb the wall here by the guards, do you think if you know if you went around the other sides of the wall, it's less guarded? We'll go to the left. I guess left would be north. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. You guys go to the north side of the wall where there's no guard and try to find a spot where no one's watching. Sort of on the south side of the co-op, so sort of like at the bottom of farmland where there's not a whole lot of people. So you guys want to try and climb and stealth the wall to climb and stealth without being noticed? Is there a way to look for these magic tunnels? With another knowledge local, maybe. That's not, I built those tunnels. That's it. You just heard rumors that there are tunnels, but you don't know what the, anything else about them. Funny, not natural. All right, so sin a little bit more. Someone know there's a gang called the Black Swan rumored to use the tunnels, but you don't know much about them. They're a very secretive gang, rumored to have a Black Swan tattooed somewhere on their body, but they're very secretive. So you don't know much about them. You just heard rumors about them existing. You're not even sure if it's true. <laughs> Is it possible I can burrow underneath the wall? <laughs> If you have a burrow speed, it's possible, but a lot of the stuff here is stone, so it's gonna be harder to burrow through. It's not like loose soil. Co-op you can burrow in, but this part of the city is like you got a paved street right here, then you've got a stone wall. So it's harder to burrow. It's possible, but it's hard and you might get caught by the guard. How high is this wall? The wall's not very tall. The the city wall, like around the whole donks, it's probably 30, 40 feet tall. This wall is only like 10 feet tall. Pick up sin and toast number. Roll me a strength check to pick up sin. Yeah, you can't pick sin up, is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Yeah. 
Ivory, Ivory tries to pick you up and just like falls over, and you guys both fall down next to the wall. But luckily, you don't draw anyone's attention here. So, like I said, there's, there's a bunch of fields right here. Luckily, it's the south of the co op. So, no one sees this happen. You guys just kind of fall over next to the wall, and no one pays much attention. But you know, there are guard patrols that come through here every so often. So, you don't want to dilly dally here too much. It's only a 10 foot wall. It's not even that hard to climb. Roll me a climb check to climb it. You go right over the wall. Would you like to roll a stealth check as you go over the wall so no one sees you? Is it like flat on the top of the wall? It is, but it's only like six inches across. There's not a whole lot of room to stand on top of the wall or anything. The city yeah. wall is much wider. The city wall has room to walk on, but this like gated community is more like a fence. I'll roll stealth to try to get over it. It's only a five. Oh my. I also rolled a five. So someone's gonna look over and see you, but not realize and be like, huh? And then like double check, but then like, eh, maybe who's there the whole time? Oh, yeah. Here's like by the wall, leading my building. So your friend Ivory somehow made it over the wall. You don't hear any yelling or screaming since then. It's been about six seconds and Ivory has vanished over the wall. I rolled that climb check. Oh, it's, it's not a, you didn't roll a one, so you don't fall or anything, no one catches you, but you're just not over the you're about seven feet up. You're about, you're almost about to go over the top of the wall, but you just haven't yet. So everybody's got another six seconds of just like walking around, being nonchalant, feeling like nothing's going on over there, waiting for you to show up. You can roll another climb check now, now you have barely have to roll anything at all to succeed, so just don't fail, and you're good now. That's good enough to go over the wall, though, so roll me a stealth check not be seen. You go over the wall if you would like to hide, if not, just let me know and I'll see you. Okay. My perception check low enough that you are also able to sneak over the wall being unnoticed. You guys are now in the rich part of town. The house is really nice. There's a really tall, like, dunce cap looking spiral of town with a neon snake going around it. It's a decadent part of town. Rich. Full of a lot of magic users. More magic users than most of the rest of town. This works more the legal magic users live. So very different from most of the parts of town you've been in. A lot of money. Walking around a lot of people in rich clothing carrying thick sacks of gold on their hip. You guys are like, like I said, on the outskirts of this rich part of town. So you're behind some houses right now. Near store. There aren't a whole lot of stores down here, but there are some personal shopper type locations with fancy imports and things like that. I like the rummage to their garbage and liquor scraps. <laughs> I just want to go to the garbage behind the fancy clothes store see what they've thrown out. Roll me a perception check. You're going to roll a two cent, of course. Ivory only finds a fancy hat, but Sin finds a full fancy garbage outfit. It's a little stained. A month out of fashion, of course. Oh, could have been seen, seen wearing this now. But you guys are a little more fancy than we were for, so you can add a fancy hat to your inventory there, Ivory. You can add a fancy set of clothes to your inventory, Sin. However you want to describe that hat or that pair of clothing, that's fine with me. Your, your clothes now are probably like two years behind, so this is already like way more up to date than your current fashion. Roll me disguise checks after you find that stuff to put it on and pretend to look rich on the, in these trash clothes you just pulled out of the, the dumpster. I mean, Ivory Zool's from this part of town, so it's way easier for Ivory to play the role of I'm a rich snob. Put on a fancy hat, he's like, I'm ready to go, I'm in character. I got 19. Oh, not bad either. So Sin also follows Ivory's lead and pretends to be posh. And Sin also has the benefit of having a full nice set of clothing, so looks pretty posh. And you're a rat folk, pretty rare. So while that's sometimes looked down upon, here you might be looked upon as like ethnic or unique. While in the rest of the city, that's you, if you were a poor rat folk, that's bad. But if you were a rich rat folk, that's like, ooh. Watch out. Yeah. <laughs> so like, who's that? Who's the rich rat folk? Walk about wherever you like around this area. You guys going to the stable or you got other plans up here or what? I'm going to walk to the stable. I'm going to do it in a very confident, slow, and purposeful. I'd like to start a non-profit. Go on. To help the needy in the southern donks. Oh my god, you're gonna get kicked out. So you're begging, you're basically begging for money is what you're doing. So, Sin walks right to the stables and you kind of like hang out in the streets nearby and like, help the poor type of thing. So I'll do you first, uh, Ivory. Roll me a diplomacy check to... Help the poor, because you know they're so much lower than us. <laughs> While Sin is gone, you get four gold. So Sin, you go to the stable alone while Ivory's wandering the streets. Roll a perception check, look for Bessie. 20, not that strong. They have two camels here. Oh. Knowledge nature to make sure one of them is Bessie. Or handle animal. They both look like Bessie, but there aren't a lot of camels, so. 23. One of them is Bessie, and you could, that one's Bessie. You can tell, the one that like, when you say, hey Bessie, and she gives you like a dirty look and spits. That's, be <laughs> that's Bessie. Oh, that bitch. That bitch. <laughs> yeah, you know that look anywhere. So Bessie is for sale, and the other camel here is at a much higher price. Apparently this camel they've marked down because of its attitude problem, they've had trouble selling it. So it's only 10 gold to procure this camel. 
which is a very low price for camel. There's a bank here in the high east. If you want to go to the bank and get some money out, you can. If you want to leave and come back. Okay, I'm gonna go to the bank now. So you'll catch the glimpse of Sin in the corner of your eye leaving the stable as you're still begging. You can keep begging or you can choose to follow Sin. She seems to be heading towards the bank. I'll beg and post to follow Sin. All right, you follow Sin instead of fundraising. So you go run right up to Sin. Sin, your for another reason, I'll back with you. You hear his pockets jingling, so you obviously got a little bit of coins now. Not much, but there's a little bit of jingle going on. You guys are headed towards the bank. Hey, I agree. You need to do me a favor. Can you go out to the stable and keep an eye on Bessie, and if she leaves, like, watch where she goes, or, like, if somebody gets here or something? You know, I'm stand guard of Bessie across from the stable. I'm just checking out. Want to keep an eyeball. Roll me a stealth check to stealthy eyeball the place. Only a three. I got a 16. You're standing there, but people definitely like see you like standing across the street staring at the stable. You're not being that discreet about it. No, I don't care. Everyone keeps looking over at you. You've got your finger underneath your nose, and it's like, what's that guy holding his finger there for? Is he smelling his finger? What's happening? Meanwhile, Sin goes to the bank, withdraws how much gold? 20 gold on you. Head back to the stable. Yeah, go back. All right, on your way to the stable, you're approached by an insurance salesman <laughs> offering to sell you insurance. I ignore him enjoying. He insists that if you don't buy insurance, you're putting your own life in danger. Oh, no. Don't you want to guarantee I, your safety? I ask him if that's a threat. Diplomacy. Or sense motive. Sense, sense motive. 21. Definitely a threat. Oh, he's definitely a threat. This is definitely some sort of shakedown racket. The insurance salesman will inform you if you buy this protection, they can prevent you from any sort of accidents, muggings. Kind of thing. If anything like that happens, you get reimbursed or they protect you. So it's it's offering you protection from harm. The low, low fee of only seven gold a month. You can prevent muggings, robberies, arson. Okay, I yell out loud, this peasant is trying to beg for money. <laughs> Real loud for everyone. <laughs> All right, diplomacy. 11. No one seems to mind. Uh, he I says, hey, if you don't want protection, that's your own business. Just don't, it's not my fault something bad happens to you and he walks away. I just continue onward. I don't care about that. You make it back to the stable just fine where your friend Ivory is waiting for you. Alright, you head inside as Ivory watches. You have enough money to repurchase your camel if you like. Put down the 10 gold, repurchase your camel. The uh, stable owner asks if you like camel insurance. Oh my god, no! It's four gold a month, protects you from theft, sickness. It helps cover your doctor bills for your camel if anything bad happens. If your camel gets stolen, we've assessed the value at 10 gold, so if your camel gets stolen, we automatically reimburse you for 10 gold if we can't help you reconnect with your camel. If nothing else, you get free 10 gold if your camel gets stolen if you sign with us. Four gold a month insurance plan. I don't know you guys more than try. You don't. I don't want it. <laughs> Alright, you don't. You turn down the insurance, you just leave with your camel. You leave the stable, the fancy stable. It's a very nice stable. They have air-conditioned stalls. They have the very nice camel food there. It's a good stable. Everyone wears fancy outfits. The cleanest stable you've ever been in. There's no poop on the ground. It even smells nice in there. Now, as you take your camel out, you've got your nice camel back, part. and you guys are still free here in the high east. Hey, I'm ready. Let's again. <laughs> Unless you want to stay out there. That's not messy. <laughs> That's not it. I'm getting out of here. You, you leave the high east. All right, you guys head back out of the high east through the gate. They have no trouble getting out of the gate. They let anybody leave that wants to leave. So you guys are escorted back out. You're back on the main road now. We were poor the whole time. Ah, no one knew. <laughs> Fools! <laughs> You're flicking them off as you leave. All right, so as you guys are flicking off these people walking out the gate, you bump into some guards who are on the road behind you. Guards, hey, hey, that's accosting an officer because you bump into a guard. He accuses you of assaulting an officer. He doesn't give you a ticket, Ivory. That's like one gold coin on his way. Diplomacy. Looks like it's going to take more than one gold to assuage these guys. I toss him another gold. Diplomacy please, with that one. Please just let us be. Ah, going to take more than two gold, it looks like. Not that. Not that <laughs> I tell, the, I tell the officer, there'll be a promotion for you. Tell my father, he's very high up in the guard. Just wait a week. Alright, bluff check. It's a 28. My sense motive was only a 12. They're gonna believe your bluff. So as long as you give him a last name. You never forget this name. Zul. <laughs> Alright, they take last name Zul. That's who they're, gonna, who they're gonna ask about. They get that promotion later. So yeah, you guys are not hassled by these guards. Where do you like to head now? Yeah, I wanna talk to my boss first, though. Like, when I get there. Alright, so you guys split up and go to your You take your camel to work day? Yeah. Alright, so take yeah. your camel to work day. You bring your camel into work. You show up to the alchemist with your camel, and the alchemist is kind of cursed, like, I want to do this camel here all day. I said, look, I've been working here quite a long, long while, and I, I feel like I've, I've been a, a great worker and a great man, and you know, I want you to know that I Here, so I have a way to get to work and home. <laughs> All right, diplomacy. Work in downtown. 
Yeah, exactly. If you work downtown, they should pay for a parking garage space for you. Seven, ooh. So your boss doesn't seem, he's like, oh, I pay you. I don't I pay you well. Can't you afford to stable your animal? There's a stable here in the market area if you want to. They'll get fed, taken care of. It's stolen again. Not from the stable. It's safe in the stable. It's more likely to get stolen out in front of our store than it is in the stable. I've been threatened twice that my cow's going to get stolen. I don't think anything's going to stop them. Well, then I don't know how I can help you if I have nothing can stop them. Well, if I have my eye on her, I could at least defend her. Well, maybe you need to find a job that involves you working alongside your camel then. Ooh, I guess you don't have an alchemist. There's plenty of alchemists that want jobs here. I'm not worried. You won't ever find anyone like me. <laughs> like, rat folk? Down. Probably not. I don't know a lot of rat folk. I'll agree with you there. I wish you great luck in all of your future endeavors. I want to do like some alchemy. <laughs> and there's got to be rats like with Come on. I can roll to see if there are rats around 30% of you. Oh. Currently you don't see any rats around you, but you can assume there might be one or two in the area. I mean, it's a city, so there's always some around. You don't see any, but there might be one or two in the trash or hidden in a hole somewhere nearby. They're easier to find at night than they are during the day right now, but there are some around. I'm wild, I'm so yeah, you can roll the diplomacy with that to try to attract some rats if you like. <laughs> it's not going to work. You're gonna get tossed out of here. You're gonna start squeaking like a mouse to try to attract rats. You're gonna start making rat noises and your boss is gonna get creeped out. He's gonna get the big bouncer guy that works here to toss you out on your ass. So you get tossed out of the store. Roll a reflex save. All right, so you're gonna take five damage being tossed out of this door. You're now fired from your job and you take five curb damage from the bouncer. You're not welcome back at the Alchemist. Pretty much been banned from the Alchemist shop. Meanwhile, Ivory at your job, you're just working the pawn shop. So you got a boss, you're fucking appraising things, yeah, making some cash. I like my job. I actually like Bible, little dwarf man. What's that? Bible, he knows. What's that? Any side work. Well, diplomacy. Well, you can tell that he kind of does, but he's hesitant to tell you about it. He's like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll just tell you later. You can tell that he kind of does, but he's hesitant to tell you about it. He's like, eh, and he thinks about it. And he's like, I, I don't know. Like, you're a nice guy and all, but I don't know you that well. Maybe if you're around for a couple more months, we'll talk about you doing some side work. You got to build up some trust with Fievel. I mean, I've obviously been your best employee, Fievel. <laughs> Your own personal opinion that's maybe inflated, but yeah, you're a good employee. I ask him if it's possible to double my pay. I want a raise. Diplomacy to get a raise. But I'm not getting a raise. <laughs> He's gonna laugh and say you're still learning the ropes. But because you asked, here's what I'm gonna let you do. I'm gonna let you add pawnbroker to your profession list. You don't have any ranks in it, but you still get whatever bonus you get for profession now. And now whenever you level up, you can add ranks to that. So now you can get better at it if you would like. So now, right now your employer is telling you if you keep getting better at this job, Job, you can make more money. But for right now, roll a d20 plus whatever that profession modifier, your normal modifier would be. That's the only one you take home today. Commission. Twelve. Alright, you make twelve gold for the day. You must have sold some good stuff. Meanwhile, back on the demon ship, Arog is being groomed to be the new captain. But Kefo is rising up the ranks as a crew member, and because you're close friends to Arog, or close to the new person being groomed as captain, but things are kind of going normal right now. You guys are just following orders, doing stuff. There's still a spirit on the loose. You've been given some instructions now. The demon lord has has consulted with another imp on how to catch the spirit. Arog, you've been given three options. You go at your daily business, but the demon has given you three options. You're going to get to black water and then take over. Before you get to black water, you need to take care of the spirit problem, though, because it's going to ruin... Your crew's already too small and a few more people die. You know, you're already in dangerous territory. Your options are this. They can provide a magic jar. You can capture the spirit and toss it back in the sphincter for the, for the imps and demons to eat, therefore completing the contract and getting rid of the soul. Or you can bond it to a weapon or item, therefore bonding it to someone and controlling it in some way, having some control over it. Or, you can use blood magic which might cause the death of some more of your crewmates, or it's going to cause the death of something. It's going to cause some blood. But if you use the blood magic, the creature may be able to transubstantiate and become like, not like a familiar, but sort of like a pet. Like most uh, pirates have like a parrot or something like that. It can become a very tiny, it can become like a tiny animal that can follow you around. It would still be bound to you as the captain. All of these things besides the one that puts it in a jar, would leave it bound to either the person that holds the item what I want to is I want to approach. I've got two non creature spiritual things to ask for. You. Go for it. So I approach him and I go, Captain, I want to accomplish what you want me to accomplish. I want to be captain of the ship. I never want to do I need two things. I need to answer questions. One, how do we keep control over the crew when they leave the ship? In my experience, every time they step off board, it's gone. So 
I need to know if there anything yeah. I can do. Is there anything that He'll agree. Can do? The best way to keep them coming back on board, the best way to keep them coming back, is to either entice them with rewards or threaten them with punishments if they don't. And a lot of captains also only take them places where they know they have no. Like, you only rob ships out at ocean, and then you sink the ships you rob. They either get back on your ship or they drown. There, there are lots of ways to avoid. So the problem, the biggest, the biggest advice is don't take them to a port you can't get them back from. If you do take them to a port where they're going to walk away, be prepared to try to hire a whole new crew. And you don't have control over people outside the ship. So outside the ship, you either need money or something to hire a new crew. But if you have enough money, if you loot enough ships for you make it to shore, you can always release your crew and hire a whole new crew. They don't care as long as they get the souls. Because as long as they sign up as crew, they sign the contracts, sooner or later their souls going to end up in the ship. Sooner or later their souls are going to be devoured by demons. Have the crew that we have uh, sign contracts? Most of them have. There was some lapse of contracts because of the weird captaining that happened between the children and the bone demon that wasn't in the boat. So there are some people that lapsed contracts, but for the most part, right now you've got 15 men left and they're all people that have signed contracts, yes. Question 2.1. You know, you're talking to me about offering treasures, you know, whatever, but what do I have to offer them other than, like, treasure and, like, maybe some, like, booty? Like, and I'm not talking about the treasure booty, I'm talking about, like, the, the like, the stolen booty. Yeah. The forbidden booty. Yeah. Do I have any booty? Yeah, like, let's just get right to it, like, you could offer them sex slaves. That's also something you can offer. I mean, if you take prisoners. But, like, yeah, when you get right down to it, like, the demon ship versus, like, regular pirate ship, like, why, why are they here? Like, Most of them are here because they have no choice. But do I have to offer them anything on what pirate ship he has to offer them? Not really, no. Okay. Except for the fact that your pirate ship can go underwater. That's kind of cool. There aren't a whole lot, there aren't a whole lot of sub, submariner type vessels. There's no, like, U boats besides yours, really. Well, it's a pretty powerful ship. You guys get lots of booty because you ha you can go farther out. Like, a lot of ships can't go too far away from New Dork. Your ship is unique in that it can go much farther out. You can explore much more territory. You can probably spend a lot more time out in the ocean attacking ships than you would, like, all those other ships have to go back to shore. You can spend all your time out in the ocean attacking ships and just staying in your ship, collecting rewards. But all okay. you can do is pilot up here in the ship, and then that's it, really. When I start to leave, and I turn around and go, where's the next Close land mass, uh, Darkwater. Darkwater does touch some of the Dorp area. If you're interested in, there are some ships there that, that most of the pirate captains do molest. So if you're looking for some easy booty, that's the place to go, the Dorp area. Go to the Dorp. Let's go to the Dorp. I wink and blame I'm like, we're gonna. Once you're a captain, you can get the ship wherever you want. What do we gotta do first? We gotta take care of the spirit, right? You gotta take care of the spirit, and I gotta get you into Darkwater, and then you're good to go. I'm saying my options are like, I gotta trap, trap it in like a weapon, right? Either trap it in a soul jar, trap it in a weapon or other item, or use blood magic so it could transubstantiate and become a creature. If you do any of those things and follow the orders in this, they bring they have a demonic text there, sort of a demonic bible. You follow the rituals inscribed, so just if you don't know what you want to do, they'll tell you what step to follow. If you follow the ritual, one, it'll be either bound to the jar and you can get rid of it. The other two will bind it either to the item, which just binds it to whoever holds the item, or bind it to a creature. But if you do the ritual, it'll be a creature that's bound to you. Can I get that book? They can't give you the book, but the, the, the imp that carries the book will give you instructions. He's like, it's, it's his book, he's very particular. He'll give you the instructions, instructions if you want. It's okay, yeah, like, I, I understand, I respect, like, the, the property of the book, and, like, I don't want to, like, oh, there's any balance or anything, so I would love to, like, do what you want to happen to the letter. Yeah. The book back. He opens the book, and it's written in a language you probably understand anyway, unless you speak abyssal. Am I with you? Yeah. Sure, you're with me all the time. Yeah. My name's <laughs> Yeah, you can follow Arog around if you like. Who am I? Bakefo is now taking over another, it's, this is going to be a humanoid body. The Bakefo is in another humanoid body going by what name? Oh no, who's left? It's the body that you're in, so you can pick the name. I guess it's just Phil. Phil. Alright, so Bakefo is Phil and is following you around. Do you have any other questions for your demon lord before you guys uh, reach Darkwater? I tell Aaron that I really like the pet. Bakefo is being groomed to your first met and you guys are looking for a pet of some sort. No, 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 I got you. So, uh, one last thing before I go. In this book, I can open up this book and I can be like, how do I transubstantiate this being into maybe this bone dagger that I have? Oh, to sweet. be, on, I don't know, possess this bone dagger or maybe like a bone dagger pet? I don't know. Do that. What's the ritual for that? Definitely a possible ritual. It takes some <laughs> incantations in a language you don't understand. It takes a long ritual. It takes some coercing of the spirit. There's be persuasive towards this spirit. It helps to either have intimidation or diplomacy towards the spirit that you're working with. To convince them to embody this weapon. Because that'll be trapping them. Kind of like the Bekefo stones, this, this will become bound. They agree to it. Because if the soul agrees to it, you have demonic contracts. You have a way to, like, make it official. Yeah, so I'm going to take the bone dagger and, like, hand it off to this imp and be like, well, just do your shit then and make it go to this dagger. I have a pretty intimate knowledge that I believe that this bone dagger belongs to the aforementioned... So that'll help. That'll help control the spirit. And what's in the dagger... I think this is 
So once the spirits of the dagger, it'll cause you less trouble because it won't be around, like wandering around causing trouble. He's stuck in this item. Meanwhile, so spirit, you've had some time to do some stuff. So what have you been doing in the meantime before this imp shows up to coerce you? I'm just there, so I know what's going on. And I just had, You're spying? Uh, I just had up to the upper step. That's where they are. Uh, like, we're on the big Oh, you want to like go out in the water. You want to go like outside of the ship. I start fading the hole. <laughs> All right. You try to phase outside the ship, it becomes uh, difficult for you to phase outside of the ship. Phase as hard as I can. You have difficulty leading the, leaving the ship because of your contract and your current form. I can't even, like, get outside. You've been able to walk through walls, but the wall leaving the ship seems to be the one wall you can't get through. You're not, like, floating. Your butt's up against it, but you just can't get through. You're, like, shoving your butt. You're uh, backing that thing up, but you just can't go through the wall. Going to a Classic. And, as always, and I take that one over. I got a 20 nut notch. I get that one. You got six more guys up here, though. I'm gonna try it one more time. I got another 20 not natural. Wait, wait, wait. I got also got 20 not natural. Oh, snap! Because I'm a nice DM, players win in those kind of regards, so you take control of this body. I run over and I drink check the hatch. <laughs> the one that let go up into the water. <laughs> All right, roll a strength check. Now one. All right, so you bu the, the door's not budging. This point in time, perception check. Anyone else on the top deck that wants to see this happening or hear about it happening, or I rolled high enough that a lot of the crewmers are gonna notice and start screaming at this one crewmer who's gone nuts. This only happens for six seconds, and then Eriku's spirits like it's shunted out of the body, and the guys that they're like, "What am I doing up here?" And everyone's yelling at him, and Erica, Eriku's spirit's still laughing. At this point, you guys will open the captain's quarters doors because you're been there talking to the captain about the spirit capturing. The imp's gonna walk out ahead of you. You're gonna be like, "That's the spirit." And the imp's gonna like shake its head. He's like, "Are you?" Sure about this? I'm damn sure, man. All right, the imp starts. The imp starts speaking in abyssal to you, Eriku, a language you don't understand. But after a minute of him repeating things, you start to get the gist. Roll a sense motive. Eleven. All right, you can tell this imp is talking to you. It's definitely drawing your attention. You feel like right now you can't move. You're like stuck in place. You can't tell if it sees you or not. It's definitely looking your direction. It's holding the boar's tooth dagger in its hand and in one hand and a book in the other hand, and it keeps repeating your name and like something else, like in a weird language, like barking or. Like a uh, calling of a crow, hissing. It's like sounds like animal noises, kind of. But then your name, and he's like chanting at you and holding this dagger out. It's your dagger. Sort of check to try and get out of this grip. You can do a will save to get out of the grip. Cool. I'm gonna do that. Nine. Still stuck there in place as he chants. As he continues to chant, the abyssal words start to become clear to you. They start, as he repeats them, it becomes more and more clear uh, that the imp is calling out to you, saying, this daggers is yours and you are this daggers, calling you to put your spirit in this item. To oh, be, that's not a choice. You have a choice. You can either roam free and take whatever path your spirit may take, or voluntarily put your spirit in, the, spirit in this dagger. Basically, this demon's like, if you put your spirit in this dagger, that you are relinquished from the ship's contract, you are, your soul is bound to only this item. But I'm stuck in the dagger! Well, then you're stuck in the dagger. You can go anywhere the dagger goes. I can't do anything! What can I do That's the not true. Not true. As a dagger, you can't do a whole lot, but you become an intelligent item, so you can affect the will of a person, kind of like Bekefo's necklace does. You can't take over a body like Bekefo can, but you can affect someone's will. Do you want to become part of this dagger or not? Oh, no. I'm going to look at Arog as Phil and be like, Phil's pretty short. Phil's like four feet. You're shorter than I am. And I'm, I just look at Arog and I'm like, she likes it. Yeah, after like two hours, the imp, sweating and all greasy and gross looking, throws the dagger on the ground and curses and closes the book and says, The demon refuses this. We've either got to do the soul jar or the transubstantiation. Let's try the transubstantiation. And if that shit doesn't work, then we go to the jar. And if that shit doesn't work, then we should destroy her. I'm like, so. come to us, Eric. Come on, Eric. All right, so if you guys you want to do the transubstantiation, the imp will explain the hard part is that takes a blood sacrifice that the spirit has to participate in. How many blood sacrifices? Well, that depends on the spirit. So now we need to look at your XP, Eriku, and see how close you are to being level three. I just got level two. If you're willing to kill five of your crew members with Eriku's help, Eriku can transubstantiate as a soul creature, become a physical being composed of soul materia. That's what I've been trying to do. I'm like, but you're gonna only have 10 members on your crew, which is gonna leave you severely handicapped. I feel not too terrible. Is there a possibility that we can do this for we get crew members? I'm totally fine with getting crew 
whoever's. You're gonna have to do it now before you get a black water because he wants to leave. So do it, and then you get a black water. You're gonna be working with a crew of only ten members, and your little creature, this thing, becomes. When you become captain, you almost automatically, like immediately, have to go find five new crew members. You have to go hunting for new crew members. That's your like first mission is like find new crew members so you can fucking not die. Definitely, my first mission is get new crew members. Okay. I want to get lots of motherfuckers. So yeah. It takes five people to get a powerful barbarian fucking creature. Ally. I'll sacrifice that. I, I, got, I got a double question over here. Go for it. Yeah. Okay, this is why I've been trying to do this whole time. Let's do it. You're going to hate it. I don't care. I mean, it's still going to be a chaos creature, but it's going to have. It's going to be able to move around at its free will. So, um, so can I, so I just start a demand sacrifice? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You kill a bunch of crewers in their sleep with Eriku's help. Yeah! You use the board dagger in, her, in Eriku's yeah. name. You follow the rituals. Eriku, your spirit takes over the bodies for at least six seconds. And so that way they, the, they lay there still while Arog stabs them. You help them be killed. As long as you assist in the murders, you get the XP with it also. I assist and love it. So Eriku, you, your XP now becomes 7,500. I'll give Arog and Bekefo 100 experience points for helping. After you have murdered five of your crew members and tossed them into the oven, Eriku will transubstantiate. She becomes a glowing silvery worm, very small creature. But this creature has the ability to change shape into two other tiny creatures, smaller than a cat. All right, so what is it? Because, like, honestly, if you're going to cause more bullshit, I'm going to kill you. Is making those like big anime like glowy eyes at at the little worm, and it's just like, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go hang out with Bill because he's not there. At that imp thing, that imp thing, that imp thing, thing was hanging out. And he's like, it's so cute. Yeah, like, yeah. The imp yeah, thing was hanging out. Yeah, the imp's gonna curse under his breath, and Blaine is also gonna curse. And he's like, this is, it's all up to you now. This is your mess. You need more crew members. Blaine's like, I'm going back to the the butthole. If you need me, open the butthole and call my name. I'll show up. They return to the secret hell inside your ship. They go back. To the, oh, the blaze, the inferno. Yeah. He's like, it's way too cold up here, man. I'm getting, I got the chili oh, beans. It's, it's like, it's just the right temperature. We're in the dark water. <laughs> what else do you want? Where you got, you got dark water, you got a crew, you got a pet. I need you to point us in the right direction. You got a navigator. That's what I need you. The last time you left, shit went crazy. And then you showed up and was like, we did things wrong. I don't know what happened with Aaron. I, he did. That's not like him. I thought Aaron knew the rules. He's a bone uh, demon. This wasn't his first time captaining a ship like this. Well, thanks for it. <laughs> we'll just head toward the closest island. Uh, yeah, you know where New Dorp is. You know the point of their ships there. Blaze has already helped you organize all stuff. So if you want to know where ships are, that's been arranged. You're safe in the dark water. So unless you leave the dark water, your crew is fine. The ship has fuel from the god flesh that's kind of rotting. You guys are kind of running low on food, but there's not very many of you. So you're going through the food very slowly. And this god flesh doesn't rot that fast. The ship's fine. You've just got a very small crew, so it's hard to operate. It's not working at full capacity. You're the captain. He's gonna give you the captain's necklace, but you can only wear one magical necklace at a time. So you might have to remove your Everweight amulet. Do you want to give it to your first mate? I think, am I your first mate? I toss it to you. I put on the cocaine necklace. Never be sleep again. All right. So you wear that. And that means you can't be wearing your Bekefa necklace, which means the Bekefa necklace has to be tucked somewhere else against your skin. So you're like wearing it in your pants or something, or? Yeah, I, um, since I am a human male. You're a human male. I am going to wrap it around my penis and put it on my tight and make it look like I'm wearing a Bekefa necklace. And then I'm going to wear it around my Boof it. Uh, you cannot wear any other magical amulets that way, by the way. I'm only letting Bekefo do it because that's the nature of her character. But Bekefo will have control of this body and be wearing the Everwake amulet. That means probably Arog's gonna make you his head jailer now. He's captain, so you're gonna re resign for your head jailer role. Make Bekefo your head jailer. We got a very small crew, so Bekefo's probably the only jailer right now. The rest of your crew's probably just jerking off, lever dicks, and cooking food and stuff. So Bekefo's probably usually downstairs, and you're probably usually upstairs, and you guys have your cabins up there. You have cabin's quarters. First mate's quarters has a broken door, but it's still your own private room. A bunch of treasure. You have at least 10 people under your command. You guys are now in control of the demon ship. If you get out of the dark water, your charisma goes down. It becomes easier for people to rebel. The longer you're outside of dark water, the more likely a mutiny is. So you don't want to stay out of dark water too long. Of course, we've talked about that. And we've talked about having to feed the ship. Retain control of them, which is what I asked her. Yeah. No. If they leave the ship or if you leave dark water, it just gets harder to control. Also, this necklace uh, with a spellcraft check, yeah. you can alter your appearance. No. Oh. All right. 
So you can make yourself look however you want to look. Smaller, taller, shorter, fatter, whatever whatever race. It's an illusion. Oh, why? Like the ship is disguised as a submarine. You can disguise yourself as whatever you want to as long as you can roll a successful spellcraft check. The higher the spellcraft, the better the disguise. The most nearest dark water populated. That's yeah, where I'm like, I'm like, that's right. where I'm thinking. That's where I'm going. You're going to head north. That's going to be the, there's only one populated area in the whole world and that is the Dorp. Dorp Wasteland is sort of where the black water ends. So you're sort of like south of the donks is the last black water. Now we have you heading north towards shipping lanes where there are other boats. It's a very small crew. The food's not very good. So you guys are having a rough voyage, but you're headed that direction. I'm now known as Air Goo because I'm gooey. I just manifest from what seems to be thin air even though I was there the whole time. Booty dance and I'm flexing. I don't have a butt. I have literally, okay. I'm a tubular, like iridescent, like shimmering cylinder. Bra wobbling all <laughs> You're about two, two and a half feet long whenever you stretch yourself out. You can fly at will, so you can fly midair, you can crawl around you. I, really fly, like. I fly perfectly. I don't, I don't walk that well. No. On the ground, you're not so great, but in the air, you move around as freely as you like. It's kind of erratic pattern you would fly in, so you kind of fly kind of chaotically, but it's beautiful. And you're, like, uh, you're like a 3D game of snake on a cell phone, but you never lose. <laughs> You don't have an angry sex demon floating around your ship to <laughs> either aid or harm your journey, but either way, either this thing is now going to help you. You realize, Eric, maybe she'll realize who you are, or it may continue to cause trouble as it was doing. As I shimmer into distance, a sense of like <laughs> sort of calm comes washing over me that I hadn't experienced. Yeah, if you just want to create a appendage on the worm, at any point in time you can like make stuff pop out of your little worm body. I think it's a wisdom check, it's a concentration check basically. So wisdom is the role. You have to concentrate to do it. Now, whatever limb you create is pretty much useless. So if you create an eyeball, an arm, you can't actually use it to lift things or you can't actually see through it. But you can create the appearance of so your total mass can't change. You don't can't grow in size or anything, but you can. So as you, if you like make a body part come out of your arm, part of your tail will shrink in, things like that. You can just expand yourself in different ways. So in order to express myself, <laughs> the first thing I do. I make two bulbous, glowing yellow eyes appear on my cylinder. Alright, show me that wisdom. Before I ball, I stand in wonderment. Yeah. I have seen this shit before. 18, <laughs> eyeballs. 18's pretty good eyeball. So, what looks like yellow eyeballs appear on your cylinder. Yeah, they're like glowing yellow eyeballs. Yeah. Like, they're like glowing yellow eyeballs. Yeah. Like, they're like glowing yellow eyeballs. Like, they're yellow eyeballs. Like, they're like glowing 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 yellow eyeballs. Like, they're Appear to be me. <laughs> <laughs> Visually, as I have been, like, I feel I have once before. <laughs> you have six seconds of eyeball unless you want to concentrate I'm going to um, try to speak, which in this form I can only speak protein, which is just gibberish, so it's just um, a. <laughs> <laughs> You guys hear a weird gurgling noise come out of this creature somehow, even though you see no mouth. I'm going to fly over to the castle, and I'm going to like, like gently and just like place my shoulders. The eyes of the, that were just glazed over with water finally pop and just <laughs> hard mind to fall down to his face. I'm moist. I look at Arag and I'm like, but she was meant to be. <laughs> and I just cry. Seems very comfortable. I'm gonna transform into one of my animals, a raven perched on your shoulder. That's the noise I make. That's the noise you're on. I can actually talk as a raven, so I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna be on your shoulder and it's gonna be real loud in your ear. And I'm like, hey! And I'm like, ah! Air! Air! And I like flex my, I'm flexing my bicep. Yes! You guys have an ally back in your fold now. It seems to have all kinds of crazy new powers. The demon has left the ship in your control, Arog, at this point. You guys are adrift in the dark water heading north. I pop on top of Phil's head and I kind of like prance around as my like, raven. 
disappointed in the uh, Pokemon ball was. Uh, I'm a little bit. I look at the crew and order them to get back to work, and I go fucking take a nap. Oh my god, with a rain on my shoulder. I poop a little bit. Before I take a nap, I just keep on my mind. I poop in unexpected moments. General direction toward the dog, stay in Blackwater, closest civilization. I take that information to navigator. Who's going to have control of the ship right now? I report that with Aaron's good shit on Phil's back. Dips heading that direction. Best is to its ability. That's annoying to have the furnace with me last time. Please! Um, the furnace is all set up right now, correct? We're good. You're good for the time being, and you have some of that god meat left. I mean, it's dead, uh, unless you can uh, do the thing you were doing to make it better. You're purifying it or something. That helped. Still got a soul, so it just keeps the engine running. Purify it, the crew can eat it. But if you throw it at the engine, it creates that black smoke, but the engine keeps running. Okay, I have the purify ability. I'm going to purify some of it and take a and then I'm going to take more of it and put it in the furnace. Oh. And that's just what I'm going to do while I'm out napping. Before I take a nap, go get that bucket of sauce with the brush, and I take it back to the cook. Alright, you return the <laughs> sauce to the cook. <laughs> All the sauce. I don't want them back. Whenever you touch the furnace right. door. When you open the furnace door, you just want to damage Phil's hand. Uh, six damage of fire, so you feel it. <laughs> well, the door's open. You toss that god meat in. The raven hangs around with you as you do so. I heal, heal, roll, cry tears onto my hand. Well, not natural. All right, you wrap your hand up so it won't leave any permanent bruising or scarring on Phil's hand. That'll heal up real nice. Keep the ship running smooth. The captain rests. You guys are able to travel through the dark water. No questions of sexuality during Eric who's all over the place. I mean, you heal naturally, so the only reason you would need to rest. Oh yeah, that's another thing. I, I uh, heal hit points automatically per round. Nice. That's fine. Cool. Yeah. So you don't, I mean, you still can rest to heal if you ever lose so many hit points that you need to heal, that kind of thing. I mean, you can rest to regain spells, like your spells are only, uh, take an hour of just flying around and I'll let you regain them. Studying around the room like a, like a fucking, I'm trying to think of the right, correct animal, it's just like, kind of like a catapult, oh, yeah. but like a lot, like longer and rhythier, more like a kite that's really long and a ribbon cotton there. There's lots of free space right now. It's been cleared out since the, the crew has been reduced in size. Plenty of room for you to fly around. No pretend to sleep. Eight hours later, when you guys wake up, 16 hours after Aerog has been resting, you guys hear a rumbling when you wake up. A low rumble. We're up. Check it out. Let's check this out. Oh, shit. And I'm like, no one in all this time has ever built a down telescope. And then I like run up to the top to look up. I tell one random guy to get to work on the down periscope in his spare time. Yeah! Like a periscope that goes underneath the thing? Yeah! Just dream it up, man. I mean, you're the captain. <laughs> Go on all of your other duties. I mean, I think that's something, that's something we can probably make happen, but you might need some help from some demons for that, so you might need to coerce them with some souls, so I think you might know as captain you had some conversations with a demon. A modification to the ship can be made, okay. you would need demon help, and you probably need to bring in a lot of souls to convince them to come out here and do modifications for you. Phil's going to seduce our <laughs> So until then, you can just raise the periscope on top. Uh, I do that. Yeah. Hey, flip over. <laughs> Alright, you guys want to flip the ship upside down and look underneath? <laughs> I'll allow it. I'll allow a move like that. <laughs> Gravity still applies, so just be ready for everyone to like fall when you do that. Walk on the wall and then to the ceiling. Depends <laughs> 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 how yeah, fast you flip, I guess. Let's check out what's on top. I'm on perception up top. Hope it's not live. It's hard to tell. It's dark outside, dark <laughs> clouds. You do think you see the flash of lightning, though. Other than that, it's very dark. I look like oh. over. You can't fly through walls. You can go to the ship, but you have to go the same way anybody else would go. Yeah, you have to go through the hatches like anybody else. Okay, but you see me like bumping new things, like I'm no longer, I can no longer want to like face through stuff at all. You got a physical form. I'm physical now. I ask Aerog if he wants to look through. Oh, fuck it, I'll take a look. I don't have eyes, so I'm at it like, I'm trying to watch it. Um, can I sense anything? What does law, detect law do? It's basically like a spidey alert for lawful creatures. This is dark to you. You don't even see any lightning. It's just dark, pitch black. Can I use my shirt to clean off the lens and try again? And I always re-roll as long as you change something about the circumstance. <laughs> 14. 14, a little bit better. So now you think you see a flash of lightning in the distance. So maybe it is a storm and the rumble of thunder in the clouds. But it's a low, long, deep rumble. If, that's, if it is this storm, it's a serious storm. 
I would like to press Phil's hand against the wall of the submarine and just close my eyes and come one with all the everything around me and try to detect magic. You do detect magic. The ship grins magic. The creature that is Ergu is magic. Arog's wearing a magical amulet. There's all kinds of magic around you. Outside the ship, it's harder for you to see far enough away, but there's definitely some magic in this dark water you're in. You are in a magical realm full of magic. A lot of it's dark magic, too, so you're surrounded by a lot of evil, a lot of dark, strange magic. I would like to press my ear to the outside wall of the ship and just give a listen. Whatever might be coming from a rumble is not that storm because it seems a bit far away. 17. Does seem to be coming from above the ship. So like, I did that hand thing and I tried to add tech magic and like, I realized like every fucking thing around me is magic and I, but I like keep my eyes closed and keep my hand on the wall because I don't want anyone to know. So I just like did that to like keep that to myself. And then I'm in a dolphin. But is it, can I make it appear on the outside of this? Yeah, it's probably better if you do that because it's going to die if you summon it inside. Well, yeah, I'm saying like if I summon it. Yeah, yeah, you can summon it outside of the ship. Like, yeah, since you're up against the edge of the ship, you can somehow it outside of the ship. That's correct. But then you can't communicate with it if it's outside. The ship. It'll just be there. It'll just be outside the ship and not know why. It might attack something nearby or defend itself if there's something nearby to do that in the water, but it won't know why it's there other than that. Other than it's like, I hope I don't die while I'm here. Let's check out how bad this storm is. Put my head out there. I got a spyglass. I can take another I'm one. Yeah, let's pop up real quick. Where I also don't tell anyone that I summoned a dolphin and, <laughs> and, and then you said let's go on top and then I don't tell anyone that inside I'm like damn it, I should have waited five seconds. <laughs> We'll, we'll do a two-front thing. Dolphin, we can go, we can go tough and check. So you're still moving along at pretty decent speed, so it's very windy, but you guys can open the hatch and be up there. Raining. Right. There is lightning now. You're up there. You can see lightning coming down. Can we uh, uh, tell our guys to slow down? Yeah, I'll like, slow down a little bit. Yep. Salt water's getting in the eyes. Yeah. Like, All right, the ship slows down a little bit. It's like struggling to keep up behind us. I'm a worm right now. Uh, the worm. <laughs> <laughs> I was prepared for this, so I bust out my spyglass. Okay. Turn your eyes to the clouds. Spyglass 14. <laughs> it's still too much stuff in your I mean, there's definitely something <laughs> moving around in the clouds. Okay. A natural one for perception. All right, Arog sees something moving around in the clouds. Kepo sees nothing because she doesn't have a spyglass, so she's just looking around. Something moved around in the clouds? Yeah. <laughs> but Kepo's got water all in her face and eyes. And Phil's, uh, Phil's face is all wet. He's like wiping water from his eyes, can't see anything. But yeah, you saw something moving around. You can alert them if you like. Yeah, there's, I think I saw something moving up in the clouds. I'm like, I can't see anything right now. That's what I saw. I'll be your eyes. Be my eyes. <laughs> it was hard to make out. You just saw it like in a flash of lightning. You saw something moving around up there. You couldn't make it out in time. I asked Ergu if she wants to go check it out. Do you know about the hole mm -hmm. in the ship? <laughs> You can't see. You have blind sense. I mean, you can sense things around you. But you're right. You can't see uh, anything to describe anything. Can I sense something? You can fly though. Phil cannot fly. I fly. I shoot up in the air just like a real fast, straight shot. And I yeah. In your raven form, you do have eyes. So if you switch to your raven form and fly up, then you can have eyes to see. Yeah, I think that's how I'm gonna use my last animal form to shoot up as a raven. Right. Before I decide to turn into a raven, can I shoot up in the air and try to blind sense? And that's like something that's out there before I decide. When to... your blind sense is only 30 feet, but if you want to fly up, you know, in that direction that you think things are, you can always change into a raven whenever. Your, your fly speed slows down as a raven, but you grow eyes. You can, like, fly up really fast, really high, and then change into a raven, and then actually scope things out if you like. Yeah, I'll do that. Roll a perception check once you, like, get up really high and then turn into a raven. 18. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, pretty, that's yeah. good enough. You're up high enough to see that up in the clouds there's, you know, you see lightning, you're, there's wind. You're actually up in the storm, but very close to the clouds. You see creatures bobbing in and out of the clouds. There are five of these black winged bat like demon creatures flying around through this storm cloud and you see them now in your raven form. I go back down. Right, you dive right back down. Fly back to the ship. I land on Phil's bald head. I'm a raven for like 30 minutes and then my raven form I'm like Beast! <laughs> Phil was a member of the kitchen crew. The only thing he's carrying on him is a spoon. I draw my spoon. I go, listen, we've seen some crazy shit out here. I'm not tackling with fucking like thunder. We can just dive. Yeah. I'm going back to the ship and we're just going to dive. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a squishy bird right now. We've got bare minimum crew. Not get sidetracked. 
Yeah, yeah, you guys want to go down, you get back in the ship and just go deep to try to avoid anything that's up water. We're going to go deep. I do a weird bird crouch on top of Phil's head. It's like on off planet Earth when the birds do like weird fan stuff with their wings. I'm just like bird. You're stunned. You're peacocking. Or like on top of Phil's head. Phil's head starts to Deep, deep in your scalp. I gasp and look at Aerox. Me! Suffice to say, she's not one of the remaining ten crew members, so you could guess she got fed to the ship. Oh, I don't feel bad about that. You I would continue. Like to rotate the ship. All right, you want to flip the ship? You want to try to get the crew to like climb the walls and, and flip with it? Like do a slow, yeah. slow yeah. revolution? First, I have them like secure ship. Like we don't need to tie things point. down. Uh, tie stuff uh, down the galley. I like that. Down. We're gonna do a maneuver. That's good captaining right there. So you make sure everything's secure. You're gonna walk to the edge of the wall, and as we rotate, you're gonna walk up the wall until we are on the ceiling. Pirates of the Caribbean shit. I like it. Just like the ride. Just like the ride. Either a climb or acrobatic check to make sure you don't fall when this happens. Seven out of your ten other crew members have a hard time with this maneuver. So they tumble some. Take They'll take minor damage. Anyone that tumbles will either take five damage or you can roll a reflex save to take half of that, which we'll say is two if you do a reflex save above 15. All the crewmembers that fell will take two, and you, anyone else can roll that reflex save as well if you didn't do so well. Roll the 13. If you don't pass So you'll take five instead of two if, if you failed the first roll. Yeah. Only if you failed that first climb roll, though. Yeah, I rolled, a, I rolled 13 on the first climb. Okay, yeah, then, then then yes, you need to roll the reflex save. Then. Yeah, dude, I got fucked up. Yeah. We're like, yeah, we yeah. the ship. Yeah. <laughs> So a lot of you guys take minor damage as you roll the ship. I mean, everyone stumbles at some point. It's kind of a funny maneuver. Either that or some things fall off from some places and hit you on the head. Like, it's just minor scrapes and bruises. None of that was serious injury, I'm sure. Something will laugh about me. Yeah. yeah. Now the ship's upside down and you can look through the periscope. You're standing on the ceiling of the ship, basically, but the ceiling is on the floor. And you can look through this periscope to see what's underneath you, if you like. Who's doing it? I guess there's only one eyeball on the periscope. 24! So you're deep underwater now and you will see the remains of a... F Old civilization towers. So you guys are now gonna have to pilot your way through. Oh my god! You see, you're heading towards a bunch of them now. You're like floating over a great seaplane with coral and stuff, and you're like floating, ship sailing towards these towers. Hey, you can steer the ship with your mind. I think so. Pretty much, as long as you, as long as Arog makes his will known, it is done. Okay, I'm like Arog. You out, and I, like, move so Aaron Alright, get in there, and as long as Aaron's looking through the periscope, he can pilot you guys through stuff. So, perception check, as long as your perception doesn't suck. 14. 14 perceptions, we'll say, is good enough to see. I mean, it's hard for you to see what's in front of you. So, you're, like, just narrowly, you're, like, right when you get up to the village, you're like, whoa! You're, like, piloting as orchestrally as possible. Maybe sometimes you bump up stuff a little bit, but you're piloting around what looks like an old city from thousands of years ago, something you guys only heard about from stories from your parents, ancestors. Like, these are, you've seen drawings of cities like this, and the cities that you, the, the districts of the new Dorp are trying to recreate this legacy to create that kind of society again. You know, that's that's where you've seen this stuff before is like in the city halls and stuff. These are like the things that are emulated. You're actually seeing the remains of one of these cities that has fallen. Imagine something like New York City, but like decayed and underwater. Uh, mark this place on the map. I don't know. I mean, if you had a way to get around out there, you might be able to procure some kind of rare items or treasure or things from that society often fetch a high price. Back in the door, if you know and you've seen in markets, those are always like rare antiquities. There are collectors of those things. If you could find good things down there, if you had a way to leave the ship, you might have, you know, reap some rewards for it. The water is now more of a brackish grayish color. It's not quite as black as the black water. Time of traveling have reached the edge of the black water. Or that, or you've dived deep enough. Maybe it's just on the surface of the water, you're like underneath it. By the way, you feel like you've sort of separated yourself from it. You're not quite in clear water yet. I'd like to stay within uh, that fringe area for a moment until that, the storm passes. No matter what the weather, tune in next time for more The Yara Dungeon. This episode of Long Distance Dungeons & Dragons Dinner Theater is sponsored by our fans and friends on Patreon. Donate today. Keep Long Distance Dungeons & Dragons Dinner Theater alive.